en faux serf. <laughs> we start whenever we start. <laughs> I know many of you are not going no man. Then those who can make it in the morning, more people, please keep your seats. But you can only keep it till whenever the service starts. 20 minutes of the service. If you are not on seat, your seat will be taken. So the Bible says, let no man take your crown. So, because many more people will be here in the evening and um, we are giving the opportunity for the fact that you are here in the morning. You can keep your seat till 20 minutes into the service. After that, thy bishop brick shall be given to another. All right. Are we set this morning? Let me say happy birthday to Pastor Joshua one more time. We love you. We have a surprise, her, but it's not yet now. We 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 we, amen. And uh, she sang so well for her husband. Of course, it's it's allowed. <laughs> Is someone ready for an encounter? How many of you saw Lekki in the morning? Oh. So you see. <laughs> that was explosive. I planned to bring the apostle up and to run to come and bring up Pastor Jerry's, but I didn't know how I found myself waiting till the end, end, end of the whole thing. That kind of meeting, you don't stand up to leave. But we are so blessed this morning. Yeah. This morning, almost afternoon. <laughs> So I have one more time. Every year, is, every year comes with a new experience. No two visits have been the same. Because God's mercy, they are new every morning. We are so honored again to have this man whose unction, the unction of God upon his eyes, ever, ever fresh. No matter wherever you meet him, anytime you listen to him, it's the same result from glory to glory. At times I watch him and you are wondering, do we really know this man? I saw the meeting in Ghana, then the meeting here and the meeting there. This is somebody that obviously is not having a better yesterday. God is taking him from one realm to another. Prepare your heart this morning or this afternoon now, again today. It will be here this afternoon. It will be here later in the evening. And it will be here tomorrow morning for the final session. <laughs> With our art prepared this morning, our sword of David again, we welcome the president of Eternity Network International, Koinone Abuja, <laughs> Apostle Joshua Silva. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, thank you. Mm. Praise the Lord. Well, Apostle just reminded me now that I should let everybody know that tonight's meeting is a miracle service. God bless you.
us to higher levels of understanding and higher levels of power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. May God bless you. Please be seated. I'm charging our hearts briefly this afternoon and then we prepare for the meeting in the night. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 57 the Bible says thanks be to God who gives us the victory thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ the faith life that we have been called into is a life of victory remember that um, God has not called us to a life of defeat. He has not called us to a life of misery. Every believer has been predestined in Christ and through Christ to live the victorious Christian life. If you believe that, say amen. amen. It's important that we establish that so that we know that our faith walk and our faith adventure in this kingdom has been predetermined. The victory of the believer is not something God is about to decide on. It's been established. Are we together? Our assignment, however, is to be able to, through knowledge and revelation, piece together the factors and the spiritual forces that we need to put together to establish and to manifest that victory in our lives here and now. Hallelujah. There are two dimensions of spiritual operations as far as God and man is concerned. There is the prophetic dimension that is already finished in Christ. But there is the experiential manifestation 
of that which is finished. Are we together? So it is possible to read from scripture realities that have been finished in Christ and never have them captured in your experience of your lifetime. Are we together? Our assignment every time we meet is to expose ourselves through the ministry of the word and the spirit to the various factors that need to be together. Are we together? So that the victorious life manifests experientially. And if we're able to achieve that even in this conference, then it would have strengthened our walk with God so that the things that you read in the Bible now becomes your experience. The Bible says the word became flesh. It became flesh and it dwelt among us. And the Bible says we beheld. We only beheld when it dwelt among us. The glory, even as of the Father, full of grace and truth. Many believers profess realities that have been established in Christ as revealed in Scripture but are never able to capture the richness of the victorious Christian life in their lives here and now. The danger that is connected to that kind of Christian experience is that eventually your frustration by reason of not experiencing the goodness of God will produce a theology that will mislead others. I hope you know that every believer is called a living epistle. That means your life is preaching a message and it is possible for your life to preach a wrong message that misrepresents God simply because your life is unable to capture the realities of the faith work as intended. So if my life is the only template about God you see, the areas where I do not experience victory in my life will misrepresent God as far as as you're learning God through me is concerned. Are we together? This is the reason why we need to continually insist that the average believer matures so that your life becomes a multifaceted representation of all the possibilities in God. That when people look at your life, even if their Bible is closed, your life opens it again and your life becomes a continuation of their learning God. They can see the possibilities of the kingdom life expressed through the various victories that are represented in your life. Are we together now? This is very important. And to be able to establish victory in the spirit, the Bible mandates that we access light and the requisite level of spiritual illumination. Please listen carefully. Every dimension of victory in the kingdom is connected to a certain kind of light, a certain kind of revelation. There is the revelation that is connected to longevity. There is the revelation that is connected to prosperity. There is the revelation that is connected to depth in God and encounters with the spirit. There is a revelation that is connected to deliverance from all the assaults of darkness so line upon line precept upon precept as we expose ourselves to these revelations eventually we will find out that our lives now start evolving to be worthy representations are we together of the potential that is locked up in this kingdom life that is the reason why believers, even though they've encountered Jesus, they must grow. Because if they remain stunted, number one, they will be frustrated. Their Christian experience will not be a worthy model to be able to inspire others to learn God. Are we together? You will not want to follow a believer whose life is full of defeat and failure. We may excuse you for a while, but when your spiritual excuses become indefinite, it now becomes a... Um, a misrepresentation of everything the Bible says. Hallelujah. When the woman met Jesus at the well, they had a conversation. Remember the woman at the well? And eventually she discerned he was a prophet. And then they began to talk about matters of worship. At the end of that discussion, she had come into that knowledge. Something had happened to her. The Bible says she ran to the city and said, come see a man. 
I cannot, I don't know what he will do with you, but I can use my life. Come see a man who has told me everything that I've done. The Bible says, at the proposition of that woman, they came. They didn't come because they loved Jesus. They came because they knew a woman whose life before and after, they could see the difference. Have I lost you? Are we still here? Are we together? And when they came to Jesus, they now had a discussion with him personally. Listen to their testimony after that encounter. They said, we now believe. Not just because this woman, paraphrasing, brought us. We have experienced him for ourselves. Now they can become living epistles. They can go back and tell them that God is good. Not just because I saw his goodness in the life of another. I have become a testament of his goodness too. I testify, I testify that your goodness is real. I testify, I testify that your goodness is real. Your goodness is real, I testify. Hallelujah. And so I want to share with us just a few keys that guide us to establish our victory again as connected to the theme of this conference. I've titled my little charge, The Sounds of Victory. The Sounds of Victory. Psalm 118 and verse 15. Everything you are learning from me and from every other man of God within the lifetime of this conference, it ends tomorrow, it's important that you understand it and you archive it as part of the tools that will be responsible for establishing victory in your spiritual life. Are we together now? That means we expect a higher level of results in your life by this conference next year. You sh it is not this version of you that should return next year. Are we together? The Bible says... The voice of rejoicing and salvation, is that KJV? Is in the tabernacle of the righteous. It says the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from the tents of the righteous. It says the right hand of God dealt valiantly. The sound, I like the, I don't know, is that KJV? The sound, the shouts of joy, it says, the original King James. The shouts of joy and victory will remain in the tent or the camp of the righteous. The way this kingdom was designed, ladies and gentlemen, is that this earth responds to sound. Sound is not just an issue of physics and chemistry. Science borrowed that phenomenon from the realm of the spirit. Are we together? This is a sound activated, um, not just planet, but domain. Nothing happens within this domain until and unless there is a sound. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 1, when you read from verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 says, Now, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered round the face of the waters. The Bible does not tell us how long verse 2 lasted. We just know that there was darkness. How long? We are not given the privilege of that information. But then verse 3, the Bible now says, Genesis 1 and verse 3, And God said, Notice, he never said, and God saw. He didn't say, and God wanted. The first expression of God as revealed in scripture was as a speaking spirit. Are we together now? And God said. And God said. That was his first response to chaos. That was his first response to Something that was negative, the spirit of God kept hovering round, but nothing happened. You would think the presence of the spirit upon the face of the deep would automatically lead to things, changes, and the rest. Even though the spirit of God was there, nothing happened. 
Then the Bible says, and God said. There was a sound that came from God. And then the Bible says, there was. The moment God said, there was. Becoming did not happen because of his presence. Becoming happened because of the sound that came from him. The presence of God was already hovering round and yet nothing changed. And God said, light be or let there be light. And the Bible says there was. And every other thing that will happen from that time was at the mercy of God said. God said and he said and he saw. And he said and he saw. He said and he saw. Are we together? This is very, very powerful. So we see immediately that even in creation and in the economy of God, sound is a very vital component, not only to creation, but to the manifestation of everything that reflects God. That if there has to be a birthing and a manifestation of spiritual realities, it will not be without the sound factor. In Joel chapter 2 and verse 1, Joel chapter 2 and verse 1, the Bible says to blow the trumpet in Zion. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Then he says, sound an alarm. Where? Upon my holy mountain. So we see that God connected seasons and occurrences to sound. That there were certain sounds that meant seasons had changed there were certain sounds that signified activities that were about to happen upon the earth are we together the nation of israel god's people were trained to respond to sound so they had instruments that signified certain things there were sounds that when they heard they knew that it was a sound of war that an enemy was trying to invade and they would prepare themselves are we together they did not move from house to house to tell everybody, be ready, battle is coming, be ready. No, it was just one sound. And everyone who heard that sound knew immediately that that sound was a language. When they went out to battle and they would defeat the kings and carry their treasures, when they were coming in, the triumphant entry back to their base, there was a sound that every time they heard, they knew that victory was already in place. Is someone hearing now? Yes. So the people of God were trained to respond to sound. The realm of the spirit operates. Thus, that same pattern. When there is a sound, it tells you that something is happening upon the earth. And God said. That means the chaos that was there somebody must have said something that led to that chaos are we together yes under a certain sound condition order now was restored when god was going to make man please look up i hope you know that every material of creation of man was already there but there was a certain sound that would bring it together that was not yet pronounced and so man was disintegrated, scattered across. But the Bible says, let us. The moment there was a sound, a making happened again. You would notice that creation always followed sound. Please follow me very carefully. That means there are certain things in your life that are possibilities. But the kind of sound they were instructed to respond to, you have not yet produced it. That's why some results have not yet happened. Are we together? Yeah. When you read Daniel chapter 3, the Bible tells us that the king made a decree in Babylon. Are we Bible students? That when you hear a certain sound, the sound of the harp, the timbrel, and all of this, everybody in Babylon must bow to that 90 foot stature. You find that in Daniel chapter 3. So, you didn't need to go to every home to say, listen, the king has made a decree, bow. That sound, the moment you heard that sound, 
It was a sound that will compel you to worship. In this case, the worship of the image that Nebuchadnezzar built. Are we learning now? Everything in creation was designed to function in a certain way. But there is a sound component that brings them to order and alignment. Are we together now? This is very, very powerful. And until the components in creation hear that sound, they do not come into the kind of order that brings glory to God. Every chaos in your life has a condition with which it will rearrange itself. But until you master the sound that releases creation to reorder itself, there is a sound that if creation hears, it must bring favor to you. It was instructed to honor that sound. That sound is connected to favor. And until it hears that sound, you can need favor and never get it. The sick body right now, the sickness itself, there is a certain sound that the body has been designed to hear. And if that body hears that sickness, that, that sound, it will correct itself. It is true. Even medical science. Oh dear. Are we learning? Am I wasting your time? Listen, I'm teaching you a very deep mystery. If you understand, that means if your life is stagnant, you see, I respect science and biology. Thank God we've written all the exams and it's over. But let me tell you this. We were taught that there's the characteristic of living things and non-living things. And one of it is that non-living things don't hear. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying this from an educational standpoint. I'm preaching as a man of God. Number one, in the realm of the spirit, there is no such thing as non-living thing. The concept of non-living is only true for science. Number two, the concept of hearing is a privilege of everything, not just men. Everything hears. Hmm. Because sound is part of the component of creation. So the hearing ear was given to everything, including the earth. Is it not in your Bible when the prophet said, O earth, hear. <laughs> just because you cannot find where the ear is does not mean it is not there. Please pay attention. Do you know, when you understand this principle, you will not go back and be regretting and hoping that things change. You will, you will spend your time learning the sounds that are connected to the outcomes that you desire. Just follow me very carefully. In physics, there is what we call resonance. Resonance is a scientific principle, is that true? That operates based on frequencies that if you use, say for instance, a tuning fork and you strike it at a frequency, every other material that is at that frequency begins to resonate. Is that true? That means you don't have to hit all of them one by one. Do you agree with me? It then means there is something you can do right here that all over the earth whatever belongs to you connected to you can resonate like that and look for you are we together now for this session there are two kinds of sounds that i want to teach you Number one, the first sound that controls the victory of the believer is the sound of prayer. The sound that comes from prayer. I hope you know that when you speak, you would be learning now the reason why when you pray, you pray loud. It does not make sense to be talking aloud when you are alone. Are we together? If I'm with someone and I'm praying, or I'm talking to you, then we can speak. I'm using a mic now because I'm talking to everyone. Imagine that you meet me in the room alone and I'm talking, I'm saying, in the, and I'm holding the mic. It's either I'm rehearsing for ministry or something is wrong with me. 
Why then does a believer talk to the Lord and sometimes you are speaking in the room and you are saying in the name of Jesus I decree and declare and you actually believe that what you are saying is being heard. The sound that comes to prayer, creation has been designed that every time you pray, the sound that comes from that prayer should be honored by creation. There will always be a reaction in the heavens and in the earth from the sound that comes through prayer. Psalms 5 verse 1 to 3. The first sound of victory is the sound of prayer. Give ear to my words. We're reading to verse 3. Oh Lord, consider my meditation, it says. Verse 2. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto thee will I pray. Verse 3. It says, my voice shall thou hear in the morning, O God. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto you and will look up. Look at, look at the character. Look at what this man is saying. He's saying, I'm going to pray. And there is a sound that will arise from my prayer that will compel your attention. This is powerful. When we pray, it is more than just communication. Our prayer raises a sound that begins to instruct creation to respond in a certain way. I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. You would look at those bones because they were very dry. A state of hopelessness. They were only dry because the sound that would bring them together had not yet been released. Are we together? Psalms 50 and verse 5. Please give it to us. Psalm 50 and verse 5. Someone's life is changing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 50. Is it verse 5? Oh dear. Give us 50. I'm looking for. Let me pull it up here. Just a moment, my apologies. I needed to see what is written in that psalm. I was studying it and when I saw this written, I was so, so blessed. It says, please give it to us from verse 15. It says, call upon me in the day of trouble. Please look up. How do you know the day of trouble? If I say call on me on Wednesday, how do you know today is Wednesday? Are we together? Call upon me in the day of trouble. That means there are moments and there are seasons in the earth that heaven recognizes that these are days of trouble. Are we together? And there are signs that are given to you that the moment you see that those seasons appear, Call upon me and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. That part of glorify me, bless me. Call upon me in the day of trouble. You can call upon me any day, but the moment you see the day, I hope you know days in the Bible also talk of seasons. It doesn't just mean a 24-hour time period. So call upon me in a season of trouble. It says, I will deliver thee and I will glorify you. My deliverance is there, but there is a sound I must hear from the earth. If I do not hear that sound, you can be a victim in the day of trouble. Scripture number three. Acts chapter four. Please let's read from verse Acts chapter 4 give us verse 23 Acts 4 and verse 23 this was the healing of the man at gate beautiful are we together and the consequences of this now the bible says that the disciples they were let go and they went to their company and reported all that had happened to the chief priest and what the elders had said now 
We're reading down to 33. Please be patient. Follow closely. It says, and when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God. Are you seeing there now? With one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which had made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. Next verse. Who by the mouth of thy servant David said, why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Does it look like Psalm 50? It says, when you see the day of trouble, don't discuss, don't negotiate, call upon me and I will deliver you and you will glorify me. The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. Uh -huh. It says, for of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. 28. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servant that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Is that in your Bible? 30. By stretching forth your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done in the name of thy holy child. 31. The Bible says, and when they had prayed, what was the response? The place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Two more verses. The Bible says, and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul. And all of those things that happened, verse 3, verse 33 now, it says, with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord and great grace was upon them. The moment they were threatened, they knew that their deliverance was dependent on the sound that would come from prayer. You would think because they were apostles already and they had the Holy Ghost living in them, deliverance would be automatic. Mm -mm. There are many Christians who have not allowed the angelic forces to respond towards you because there is a sound that has been authorized until it leaves from the earth through prayer. Nothing should happen from the heavens. Are we together? When they caught James, Apostle James, there is no mention of that prayer to heaven and James was beheaded. You would think God were powerless but when they caught Peter, is that in your Bible? In Acts chapter 12, they bound Peter hand and feet and they gathered all kinds of people. to. They jailed him and put him across prisons with different doors. The Bible says in Acts chapter 12, when you read from verse 4, it says, but prayer, um, verse 5 now, let's go to verse 5. It says, Peter was in prison, but prayer was made without season of the church to God for him. They could not come to the prison to release him physically, but they could stay where they were and produce a sound in prayer. Are we together? And the realm of the spirit began to resonate and to respond to that sound. There is a sound you can produce in prayer that announces, to, that announces to creation that you should no longer be a tenant again. Whatever will make you a landlord will start following you because a sound came. Listen, there is a sound that can come from the earth to heaven and the response is that you are shielded and surrounded. Even your salvation depends on a sound. That the word is thee in thy heart and in your mouth, even though the word is near you, it cannot save you until you confess that sound. Why would God tie the salvation of a man to sound? The healing of blind Bartimaeus was not just tied to the power of God. It was tied to a certain sound. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. He would have said, thou son of David, good afternoon. That is a sound, but not the sound for healing. Thou son of David, see you later. I hear you are a good man. That is not the sound connected to the healing. Many of us make sounds. For instance, the sound of lamentation. 
Why is my life like this? That is wonderful for contemplation, but it's not the key to your deliverance. That is not the sound the realm of the spirit has been waiting for. Others have made the sound of complaining. I don't like the way my life is going. I think this is unfair. Nigeria is unfair. In fact, the whole world is unfair. That is a sound that only suits you. In the realm of the spirit, it does not connote to any response. Someone you need to change your sound in prayer. There is a sound the realm of the spirit has been waiting for. And the Holy Spirit sent me here to help you re-coordinate the kind of sound that you are producing. Do you know even physical death, there is a sound that can come out from you and you can die. Ask the wife of Job. She was tired and she said, listen, we know this thing. There is something that can leave you to the heaven and you will lose your life physically. Cause God, she said, and die. How do you cause God? Someone teach me how to cause God. How do you cause God? As somebody who is sick and seated in one place with boils all over your body and yet the woman knew that there is something that can leave your mouth to heaven and the result is you will die. That means there is something that can leave your mouth to heaven and the result is that you will leave. Is it not in your, your Bible? I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing. But listen, choose life. Choose life. The first sound that controls the victory of the believer is the sound that comes from the place of prayer. No wonder before Jesus died, midwifing the last supper and the cross was Gethsemane. And did you notice that all that happened in Gethsemane was that prayer? He, the Bible says he was groaning. What else was he doing when he was going to die? There were sounds he was living in the realm of the spirit because after three days he would come back. And without that sound, I assure you, he would have remained on the cross and remain. He would not rot because he was the word of God, but he wouldn't come back to life. There was a sound. Many of us have left our destinies barren of the sound that is required for our rising, our excelling. And we keep wondering why negative things keep happening. I got up this morning and why is it that everybody does not like me? Because if you don't make that sound, somebody is making it on your behalf, on the realm of the spirit, the realm of the spirit. Someone is speaking and saying, may this person's life be miserable. And the realm of the demon forces are also acting on that sound. No wonder when God honors his people, he honors them with the shouts of joy and rejoicing. There is a sound that must come out from the camp of the righteous. Are we together? This is powerful. Sir, please stand. This is a sound. What did the sound say? Stand. Are we together? Did I have to pull you up? You responded to that sound. Is that true? Please sit. Please remain there. Now watch this. I'm asking him to remain there. This is for you, but remain there. This is his destiny, but he's a victim of the sound he's hearing. Are we together? This is a victim. In the next two minutes, anybody who collects this, it is yours. Anybody. Now, what? No, no, no. Please be careful. Please be careful. My apologies. Please. Don't enjoy yourself. My, my sincere apologies. I have to lay hands on you. Since both of you came, the Lord honor you, eh? In the name of Jesus, the Lord honor you. In the name of Jesus. So that we just stop that quarrel once and for all. Are we together? Now, watch this. <laughs> forgive me. Forgive me. Pastor Shola, forgive me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, why did this gentleman suddenly start running? Why did he start running here? There was a sound I produced. That means if there is something God is saying and you cannot hear, and if there is something you are not saying, don't blame God for not responding. He gave you the allowance to produce the sound. My goodness, my God. Are we together? Yes. You are where you are because there is a sound or the absence of it 
that has told the realm of the spirit to leave you the way you are. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Everybody who comes to you and is going away, they don't know what is making them respond to it, but believe me, there is a sound they are responding to. When you begin to produce the sound that comes from the place of prayer, no wonder the blessing he gave the saint was tongues. What is it about tongues? How do you begin to pray? And for hours you are in a room and you believe you are not mad. If you were not saved and you saw someone just speaking gibberish on the junction, if you love the person, you would drag him to a, a teaching hospital or somewhere and say, please help this person. I think so. Maybe he's depressed or so. Yet a believer will lock himself for hours. You don't even understand it, but you know it's a sound and that the realm of the spirit is resonating. My goodness, could it be, hear me? Could it be that what you are saying is my destiny open up? Could it be that what you are saying is by September, all my helpers show up? The sound of victory. You believe this? And God said, and there was. If you were created in the image of God, there will never be until you say this is the implication of being made in the image and the likeness of God. You have to study how things manifested with God. And God said, not and God was around. Being around does not make things. You can be the neighbor of your destiny helper and he will never help you. Because it's not being around. It is sending that sound. Some of you, your helpers are in the very department where you walk. But just assuming that because you are there, they should help you know there is a sound since 2016 the realm of the spirit has been waiting for that sound that year finished you did not send that sound but prayer was made of the church unto God for him an angel said no way for this one we've heard the sound <laughs> even the return of Jesus Christ will be with a sound is it not in your Bible the Bible says there will be the sound, the trumpet of, why does, it is his universe. So what is the sound for? I hope you know that in the twinkling of an eye will go. So that sound is not for us. It is certainly not for us. Blink your eye in one moment. That's it. We're gone. That's how fast it will be. The Bible says in the twinkling of an eye, it's not a parable. It will be that fast. So what was the sound of the trumpet for? When I learned this, I knew that there was no limit in my life. Everybody helping you today was always there. A sound was produced on your behalf or a sound that you produce is what called them. Are you seeing why a man of God stands here and says in the name of Jesus, you see what he's doing to you? There is a sound on your behalf. He's registering in the realm of the spirit. May this week be blessed. Then you say, Amen. And when you leave church, you don't know you are carrying a sound on your head. Someone looks at you and says, I've been looking for you. That sound that came from the place of prayer. I hope you believe what you are hearing. Please do. Please do. You hit a tuning fork in physics at one point and another metal or material at the same frequency starts resonating. That is a spiritual message. This is not about physics. So I can stand here and in the name of Jesus, I'm praying, and that sound will touch somebody in the US. And he said, I, I just feel like blessing. So no, you don't just feel that you are compelled by the spirit. Please shout it, say in the name of Jesus. From today, I decree and declare that the sound that comes from my prayer will compel creation to respond to me. Lift your voice in one minute and begin to pray. In one minute, please pray.
that sound if I declare that I am blessed it is a sound in the realm of the spirit the sound of prayer <laughs> hallelujah listen when Lazarus died that dead body was already in a tomb and Jesus said Lazarus sleepeth he says let's go and wake him he gets to the grave and says roll away the stone and the life of God the word incarnate is standing close to the grave yet resurrection does not happen the life of God the word of God is standing and there is a dead body there and nothing happens but this is what he says Lazarus if he just said come out that would be rapture because every dead body will have to rise so he had to identify the person in the realm of the spirit if it listen how do you call the name of a dead person and ask him to come out it means even though he was dead it was still his name in the realm of the spirit listen when you study scripture study intelligently if you are dead I thought it was your body that was just named yet in the realm of the spirit he is not speaking to a dead body he's calling a register in the realm of the spirit and he says such Lazarus the one who died come forth and the Bible says a man got up one man only God knows how many wars were fought around that cave before Lazarus died he certainly is not the only dead body there but he's the only one the master called if you were created in the image and the likeness of God he also teaches you how to bring things back from the dead that means you can sit down and say my glory and my destiny the destiny of my family in the name of Jesus I send a sound and I declare comfort you are praying it in your one room listen I I like you to say it in one minute pray it comfort 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 I prophesy by the power of the Holy Ghost comfort comfort the glory that God has placed upon my life comfort be revealed comfort hallelujah hallelujah listen up when Lazarus came forth bound hand and feet he now said lose him and let him go and he left when Jesus died the Holy Spirit was still there yet Jesus was not resurrected because the sound that he left was that it was after three days not one day so the Holy Ghost could not come immediately to raise him he had to wait until he became consistent with the sound destroy this temple he says and after three days but on the third day that sound was activated the Bible says an angel came rolled the stone and sat on it and the Spirit of God who represents the glory of the Father came and the Son of the Living God resurrected with honor and when he came out he met the disciples and the first thing he said is all hail all authority in heaven and in the earth has been given unto me go ye therefore go therefore go therefore go therefore how come listen this thing is so powerful we are in church now do you know there's someone who is seated here with a truckload of challenges there's someone seated here with a medical condition the spirit behind that problem is listening to me he knows I am here yet he will not leave until a certain sound comes but the moment that sound comes I 
Jesus passing Lazarus or Jesus passing blind Bartimaeus. How does life pass a man and you would think a miracle should happen even without him touching? After all, it happened to the woman with the issue of blood. So why could it not happen to this man? But Lazarus produced a sound. Mercy has a sound. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And he turned and looked at him. What should I do for you? And when he told him, that man got his healing and his miracle instantly. The sound that comes from prayer. Let me give you the last one. Is God speaking to you? Some of you, before evening, your miracle service tonight will only be thanksgiving. Because but between now and evening, what God, the things that will shift in your life, is like the realm of the Spirit has been waiting for you to hear this sermon. You will only come to thank God for others. Because as for you, God can do a quick walk. Is it not in your Bible, satisfy me early? Put timing to it. Hallelujah. Satisfy me early. Satisfy me early. There's a lady here, the power of God is coming upon you. The Lord is saying your family for a long time. As I just, I, I just said, satisfy me early. I had that. Please help that lady. In the name of Jesus, I declare by the spirit of the living God that this siege, the sound that the altars that plague you have been waiting to hear so that they release you. I stand like Gabriel stood. He said, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God. That means you can trust the sound I came with. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare like that sister, every altar that has held anyone down that will not let you go i stand by priest to help them please and i produce a sound let them go now help them please let them go now let them go now let them go now I prophesied as I was commanded, and there was a sound. You would see one bone here, and another bone here, and another bone here. Don't think because they are far, they cannot come together. No, no, no. Your helper in US is not too far to reach you. You have not spoken the sound. If bones can come to his bone, your land can look for you. Your helper can look for you. Go to his home. Listen, I submit to you by the Spirit of God and with every sense of humility. Trust me when I tell you I know what I'm saying. I'm not teaching you nonsense. The things we have seen, the things we have heard, by the privilege of God's mercy, the things our hands have handled, this is that which we teach. My friend, this man, come. I release grace upon you. Take that grace. In the name of Jesus, a new season opens for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, this man is going to be a sign and a wonder. What God is going to do in his life will surprise you. That level has always been waiting, but there was a sound that needed to be produced. Let me produce another sound over your life that in the name of Jesus, everything that should have entered your life from January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, and now September, between now and the end of this month, in the name of Jesus and by all means, it must enter your hand. of you by now you are supposed to be operating in the realms of visions and prophecies but that dimension has been waiting for a certain sound your prayer life has gone down so the prophetic cannot be activated I strengthen your prayer life right now I, st I strengthen your prayer life right now can 
I tell you this? Hear me. I speak to you by the integrity of the word of God. There is no defeat for the believer who is determined to keep sending these sounds. Oh, I shall not die, but live. That is a sound. I am blessed in the city and blessed in the country. That is a sound. A thousand shall fall by my side and ten thousand by my right side. None shall hurt me. With my eyes will I see and behold the reward of the wicked. The rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lips of the righteous. Sounds. Please sit down. Sound number two and we'll end for this session. Are you ready? Hmm. The second sound that programs the realm of the spirit for the victory of the believer is called the sound that rises from praise. The sound that rises from praise. Help the person who starts laughing in the spirit. It's not gibberish. It's an anointing. This is very, very strange how the spirit of God works. That person, it is, it, is, it is a new season God is opening, is a laughter. Listen, Sarah said, all who hear this will laugh with me. The ministry of the spirit is very interesting. Remember Kenneth Hagin used to have these things in their meetings. Forget about the childishness in the body of Christ and mismanagement of gifts. Authentically, you can edify the body by the diversities of the operation of the Spirit. Are we together? When I'm under the shadow of your wings, your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. Here's the part of the song I really love. Listen. I am victorious. I have overcome I am victorious I am hallelujah I raised that song and I saw an employment letter all I saw was the first part congratulations I'm speaking to you by the Spirit of God. This is what I saw. An employment letter. Please, if that happens to you, make sure that you come and testify, whether it's evening or tomorrow. I'm saying this by the Spirit. I saw congratulations. This is an email. An email. This is what I saw. The believer is a mysterious personality. Your knowing the things that empower you for victory is what transforms your life. Hallelujah. Please don't miss tonight's miracle service. Send a message to everyone you know around and tell them it's a new season. There is a sound that is rising from this place, even to the nations. There is a sound that is rising from here to every grave. Ah, this night, the same way the angel rolled the stone, there are stones we are going to roll tonight and the angel of the Lord will sit on it. The sound of praise. Let's have this so that we can go and prepare for the night. Psalms 150. <laughs> Psalms 150, just six verses. Please give it to us. Psalm 150. Is there someone with the name Chinenye? My goodness. God does not want us to do miracle service. You are having a hair. You, you did, you, it's like you barbed. Your, your, it's not a plated. This is a lady. Oh, but I will still, well, he has come. Can I just speak to you? Who is that Chinenye? Huh? 
I am victorious. Where are you from, my dear? Huh? I'm going to pray for you. My dear, look at me. Where's your family? I need to pray for you. I'm not a prophet of doom, eh? but there's an attack. I need to pray for you. I need to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. I know I'm speaking to everybody, but I know the Lord was telling me that the lady did not flatter her head. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. For the Bible says, the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. You know what he says to one, he says to all. I'm declaring right now, my dear, I decree, I'm seeing something that looks like a chain around your waist. In the name of Jesus, I lose it now. I lose it now. I lose it now. This thing has tied this lady down. I don't know who this lady is, but in the name of Jesus, let that chain be loosed now. Lose now. My friend, what do you do, sir? Because you want to start a business yes, sir. and the Lord told you, yes, sir. you even had a dream of yes, it sir. and God told you you will start a business. Yes, you are in the will of God. God is going to shift you to a level in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me. Don't be afraid. I will not come and give you wrong counsel. Don't be afraid. This is something that took you a long time. It's not like it's now he said it. Yes, you lost touch with the bank. You sat down. Now this is not an advice to leave the bank. I'm only speaking to this gentleman. Are we together now? Yes. Because you see, influence is a very dangerous tool if you don't manage it well you can destroy people innocently because of the mismanagement of it so this is an advice that is just unique for this gentleman addressing his peculiar situation are we together i want to pray for you you believe in the power of god ah. Hello, Bobbara will turn your life around. Hello, That's what is happening to this man, oh. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you, my friend. Who is Anthony? Anthony. This is my man again. Your name is, his name, you are Anthony. I want to pray for you. You are entering your season of reward. This is what God is saying. Season of reward. You are Anthony too. I will pray for you. But this gentleman, your season of reward. Go and write it down. This thing will start happening from next week. Next week. Is he married? I'm seeing a woman by your side. And the Lord is saying it's her season. It's her season. Is your wife in? Where is she? That's your wife. Listen, go and write it down. From next week, what God is doing in your life, you and your husband, it will surprise you. I release that grace upon you just like your husband. It's a new season. Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. For my God is doing a new thing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God, eh? Psalms, please sit down. 150. In Jesus' name I declare you return with testimonies, all of you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please don't miss, I'm saying it again. Some of you may need to call certain people and tell them, connect online. Don't tell me you're in America or UK. Connect. I found a cure for this thing disturbing you. Is this miracle service. Connect by faith. This is not about promoting a man or a church. This is God reaching people. It is amazing how certain challenges can just live like that. Tonight we're coming here to produce sounds sounds in the spirit that signify 
deliverance that signify healing to the glory of the name of the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. He says, praise him in the firmament of his power. Verse 2, reading to 6. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. 3, praise him with the sound. How do you praise him? With the sound. So there is a sound that praises the Lord. Praise him, not just with your hands. Praise him with the sound. My friend, please clash your symbol for me. What does this mean? What is this? Yet the Bible says God wants it to praise him with the sound. Why will God demand that in your praise there must be a sound? Please understand what I'm teaching you. Praise him with the sound. Not any sound. The sound. So, what is this? No, listen, listen, listen. Why are you clapping? Is it exciting you? Father, I bless you. I give you all the praise. You are the lion of the tribe of Judah. What is this? So, your hand is a worshiper. There is sound it is producing. And God understands the language of that sound. Are we together now? Yes. So when you begin to worship him, when I came in, I saw pastor's wonderful wife just worshiping and you people were producing sounds. To you, you some of you, you were just doing service and yet not knowing that that sound is being carried by angels and saying, Lord, this is the sound. Now they interpret the sound. For some of you, your dance and your clap meant, Lord, I am tired of this situation. Change it for me. For some of you, your dance and your clap meant, this is the last time my children will ever beg for bread. For some of you, your sound on your clap meant, this my womb that has not had a child. Let it end right now. Do you know that spiritual activities, I'm not just talking of the clapping of your hands. Sounds. Hear me, when you say praise the Lord, it is a sound. It's only that it carries words that because you are educated, you understand what you are saying. To an illiterate, when you say praise the Lord, it is a sound. He does not understand. However, it is a sound. It says praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with psaltery and harp. Reading to 6 verse 4. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Hmm. Praise him with the stringed instrument. Look at the specifics. He's saying, I want you to praise me, but I'm giving you the details. Verse 5. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. It is when God opens your eyes and the same way I'm giving word of knowledge, that can be the same way that Simba is saying somebody who came for this service. They are instruments of praise. It says praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Verse 6. Let everything. Hold on. Hold on. If you remove that has breath, you are still right. Let everything praise the Lord. Because everything has breath. You need to know how they were created to know they have breath. Everything that has breath, including your bank account, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. The sound of praise is a powerful sound. It sends a strong message to the believer or to the realm of the spirit that makes for the rescue of the believer. Psalms 18 and verse 3. So that we can tie it up. Psalms 18 and verse 3. I will call upon the Lord. Say prayer. I will call upon the Lord. It says who is worthy. The word worthy there means deserving to be praised. So by this formula shall I be saved from my enemy. 
there is salvation in the sound of prayer there is salvation in the sound of praise that every time you need deliverance surrounded by enemies like it happened in the days of Jehoshaphat they knew in 2nd Chronicles I think 20 from verse 20 down to 25 the Bible says they went to the valley of Tekoa and they were already surrounded by enemies they said if we use swords they will kill us let's change the realm of the spirit needs a certain sound and they lifted their voices and began to praise and the Bible says the Lord sent ambushment and allies who came together found a reason for division and they started killing themselves. The Bible renders it in a very interesting way that everyone helped destroy another. That means the last two who were left decided who would die first. The last person certainly committed suicide. Are we together? The sound of praise is truly a sound of victory right in your room right in your house right in your office you can drop everything ministry may not seem to be working dear man of god complaining is sending a sound that authorizes that situation to continue i hope you know complaining and murmuring and grumbling is what turned a journey of 40 days to 40 years do not downplay the longevity power negatively speaking of complaining God you have not done so well is it only 10 naira you gave me and this that sound in the realm of the spirit says leave him there that is the sound you produce but somebody will come and sing and dance and say unto you who helped me that I am holding 10 naira it is your faithfulness you are sending a sound that says all the gates of supply hear the word of the Lord coming from the believer Ephata, be opened and you will find out that doors continue to open hallelujah do you believe this please take it higher for me we'll have to round up hallelujah eh. hallelujah eh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very powerful song. Here's what it says. Now unto the one upon the throne, we raise a sound. We raise a sound. For he is God and God alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more time. Now one to say. Now unto the one upon the throne. We raise a sound. We raise a sound. Oh, he is God and God. hallelujah means hallelujah comes from the word halal yeshua it means praise the owner the master in one minute i'd like you to raise a sound of praise in one minute a sound of thanksgiving go ahead it's in your language if you want to dance, dance. You want to say thank you, say thank you. Believe me, you are raising a sound. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I raise a sound from my heart. A sound of thanksgiving. For the things you have done 
For the battles you have won Only you are worthy of my praise I magnify your name For the things you have done For the battles you have won Only you are worthy of my praise I magnify your name I magnify your name I glorify your name. I magnify your name. I glorify your name. For the things you have done and the battles you have won. Only you are worthy of my grace. Learn this as a spiritual principle. Household of David, learn this body of Christ. The realm of the spirit responds to the sounds that are created from the earth. If the sound of honor and worship to the king rises from the earth, there will always be a response. If the sound of prayer rises from the earth, there will always be a response. When Jesus took five loaves and two fish, he lifted it to heaven. And the Bible says a sound. A sound that is correct plus five loaves and two fish equals 5,000 plus. Are we together? So you can take what God has given you and two fish and raise a sound of praise as a communication of thanksgiving you will see multiplication. Every time you are praying, realize that you are programming the realm of the spirit to respond to you and to respond to the purposes of God in a certain way. This is my charge to you as we prepare for the miracle session. Don't wait for tonight to begin to make the sound. Right from church here, while you come out, now you know the power and the value of your word. Some of you will need to smuggle yourself in one corner and for 10 minutes raise a sound. Lord, I thank you. So this is what you are able to do with my life. I raise a sound of thanksgiving and by evening you are already crying the tears of joy. May the Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that by all means, that dimension pre-programmed for you by the Spirit of God, you will step into it. For some of you, by reason of this conference, you are stepping into very deep levels in the Spirit. Some of you, your ministries will never remain the same. You are accessing mantles and graces and anointings. And hear me, every negative sound that has come either as a curse or as an ill-spoken word, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that God will deliver us from six things. Yes, seven things. One of it is the scourging tongues of men. If there is anyone who has spoken against you and is sending a sound that is programming a, a wrong climate, we cancel it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord bless you and the Lord honor you in Jesus' name. like it's getting more and more serious. Is someone ready for the evening? Yes, what time are we starting? Four, four. Some are saying four. Some are saying five. Wait, it's very simple. Uh, we are practicing democracy in Nigeria. <laughs> Since I've not heard from the Lord about what time, so I'll give you the option. If you are for four, can I see your hand? Now, I mean, those of you that, those that I know you are the ones not planning to go home. We'll start 4.30. So that, because...